Good evening. Are we there yet? There we go. Getting a little sound. I don't need too much, Sean. I got a big mouth up here. So I'm glad that you're here tonight. How many of you are glad to be in the Lord's house this first Sunday night of 2024? It's a great place to be. And we're going to sing together. We're going to pray together. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to hear from Pastor Bill tonight. Uh, we're going to hear from the Lord tonight through Pastor Bill tonight. And so we'll get that straight here. But we are glad that you're here. We're going to sing together. So grab them hymnals. You're going to need them tonight because we're going to sing some stuff we may not have sung for a while. Over on 419, there's an old song that says, There's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Yes, it's mine. Are you glad your name's written down? 419. I was once a sinner, but I came pardon to receive from my Lord. This was freely given. And I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home, for there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine with my sins forgiven i am bound for heaven never more to roam okay how many of you figured that course out it's kind of hard to follow it there but most of you probably know this song anyway so just Forget about the book and just sing it, okay? On the second verse. I was humbly kneeling at the cross, fearing not but God's angry frown. When the heaven opened and I saw that my name was written down and there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home, for there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. In the book tis written, saved by grace, oh, the joy that came to my soul. Now I am forgiven, and I know by the blood I am made whole. And there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. And there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine with my sins forgiven i am bound for heaven never more to roam amen aren't you glad for that tonight you can know that your name is written down and I don't know, I've, I've been wanting to say something about this for a while, so I'm just going to. I'm going to take a liberty tonight. Can I do that? You, you can't stop me. I got the mic. I guess Sean can stop me up there. But I'm, uh, thanks, Sean. <laughs> Sean took care of it. But you know what? I've been watching a young man around here that a year ago couldn't sing that song. But he's sitting right back there by his wife tonight. 
a new name written down in glory this year. And I am so tickled. I walked in Wednesday night, and Anita and Rick are down there working in Awanas, and I'm thinking, wow, what a great God, because a year ago it wouldn't have happened. But God is working. God is moving. And I just praise the Lord tonight. I, I told my wife, I think it was last week, I said, I, I mean, you know, we sit back there in the rowdy section. But it gives you kind of a clear view of most of the church. And I told her when we left here, I said, I thought old Rick was going to take off because I was watching him over on the, clear over on the other side of the church. I thought, he's going to take off. I am so grateful for my friend Rick and the transformation God's made in his life this year. And Rick, I am so just glad your name's written in the book of life. Let's sing another song, 487. 487. (laughs) I understand. I understand. Anita would come, and I'd always tell her. When she was here, she'd come by herself. I'd say, tell my friend. That we love him, we want him, we're, we're still waiting to see him. And it finally paid off. And I'll never forget, it was a Sunday morning. It was a kid's program, Susan. And I'll never forget him standing up saying, a little child would lead him. And who would have thought? And then Wednesday night, we see him and Anita down there with grandkids, I believe, around, running around this place. I tell you what, it's great. God is doing great things, and we've got a lot to praise him for. 487, I am resolved. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, These have allured my sight. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to go to the Savior leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one. He is the just one. He hath thy words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth. He is the living way. I will hasten to him. Hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, Foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Amen. Y'all singing good tonight. Have you made that decision? I am resolved to follow the Savior. 481. I tricked Susan. I found one she didn't know. Or she said she didn't, but 
we did all right with it. So 481. Sweet are the promises, kind is the word, dearer far than any message man ever heard. Pure was the mind of Christ, sinless I see. He the great example is and pattern for me. Where he leads I'll follow, follow all the way. Where he leads I'll follow, follow Jesus every day. Sweet is the tender love Jesus hath shown, sweeter far than any love that mortals have known. Kind to the erring one, faithful is he. He the great example is and pattern for me. Where he leads I'll follow, follow all the way. Where he leads I'll follow, follow Jesus every day. List to his loving words, come unto me. Weary, heavy laden, there is sweet rest for thee. Trust in his promises, faithful and sure. Lean upon the Savior and thy soul is secure. Where he leads, I'll follow, follow all the way. Where he leads, I'll follow, follow Jesus every day. I hope that's your prayer. I hope that's the prayer of your heart tonight as we enter a new year where he leads I'll follow over on 490 you say we've already sung our three songs Joe well we're going to sing a couple courses and one of them's over on 490 and I was thinking what a great way to start 2024 by making this our prayer Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. This is my constant longing and plea. Blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art, I want to be like you. I hope that's your prayer tonight. If it's not, it can be before you leave here. That that would be your goal for 2024 to be like him. Can we sing that chorus together tonight? Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Blessed Redeemer. Pure as thou art, come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art, come in thy sweetness, Come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Not my will, but thine, 
not my will but thy not my will but thy will be done lord in me may thy spirit divine fill this beam of mine not my will but thy will be done lord in me i'm going to ask susan to keep playing we're going to sing some of those courses again in just a moment but there's a lot of people counting on us church a lot of people that need our prayers and I just want to remind you of some of those this evening. Continue to pray for Janie Parsons, that God would just be with her and the doctors as they work with her. Continue to pray for Jerry as he's at home. I think some of you probably got the text message today. We need to pray for Linda Cavender. Uh, fractured her back last week and in a lot of pain. Let's keep her in our prayers. Continue to pray for Debbie Brown that God would just be very close to her and to Joyce and Patty, that God would just give guidance and direction and God would just lead them and be the, all they need you to be. Pray for Chuck Hughes. This is uh, Liz's friend. Chuck had some surgery this week and he just needs a special touch from God. Just pray that God's will would be done in Chuck's life. Pray for Pastor Mike, who's not feeling well. Keep him in your prayers. Continue to pray for our Awanas group on Wednesday night. You know, it was a soft opening last week, and I'm think, I, I'm going to be honest. I walked in last week, I'm thinking soft opening. There will be 10 or 12 people around that place. I sure didn't expect 49 kids and nearly 30 workers. God is in control, and God's working. And you may not feel there's a lot you can do for Awanas, but I'm guaranteeing that if Joan were here tonight, Joan would tell you the one thing that everybody can do is pray for them. Pray for the leaders and pray for those kids that come through our doors that God would speak to their hearts and they would be drawn up close to him. So would you just continue to pray uh, for Joan and the leadership of the Awanas group and also for those kids. And then I think you saw the message this afternoon that our friend Harry Folden left this world to be with Jesus this morning. And so uh, the message came out uh, that we need to pray for the Folden family, pray for Pam and Courtney. Uh, just ask that God would be with them during this very tough time in the loss of our friend Harry. Can we sing that chorus again? And this evening, here's what I want us to do. There's a lot of requests. Would you take hold of one of those requests? Just doesn't matter which one it is. And would you make it your prayer request during this time when we pray? I just want you to remember that request. You know, we pray about so many things, and Pastor did a great job this morning talking about prayer. But we pray for so many things, but sometimes I think we need to be specific. And so I want us to get a little more specific tonight. I want you to pick one of these. You say, well, Joe, there's other things I need to pray about as well. Well, then maybe that's what you want to pick. But I want us to focus tonight on these specifics. And I'm not going to assign who's going to do what. But you grab hold of one of those requests that as we pray tonight... Would you make it your prayer, God, not what we want in this situation or in this life, but what you want. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing it, and then I'm going to take just a moment. Some of you may want to come to the altar and bring that person. Some of you may just want to kneel right there in your pew. But I want us to get on our knees and our faces before God. And tell him, not my will, but thy will. Not my will, but thy 
not my will but thine not my will but thy will be done lord in me may thy spirit divine fill this being of mine not my will but thy will be done lord in me and as susan plays through if you want to come and pray come and pray maybe you want to kneel in your pews whatever you want to do let's just take a moment and prepare to go to the lord tonight Father, that's our prayer tonight. As we enter 2024, not our will, but your will be done. Father, I pray that tonight, that as we come before the throne of grace, as we approach it boldly tonight, knowing that everything is in your control and in your hands, and we don't have to worry about any of these situations because you've already gotten them taken care of. For you tell us that all things work together for good to those that love you, who are called according to your purpose in Christ Jesus. They may not turn out the way we want them to, but Lord, we can feel confident and know tonight that they are in your hands and that tonight your will is going to be accomplished. Father, I pray that tonight you would just come and settle in upon us as you already have. Father, that you would continue to walk in and out of our aisles and speak to our hearts. Father, I pray that tonight that you would be with every one of these requests. And Father, as we have grabbed hold of them tonight, and Father, as we reach out on behalf of that one individual that we've chosen, Father, would you be with them tonight? May they just feel your peace and your presence and your power surrounding them and being with them even right now. And may they know that the church loves them and the church cares and that they are in your hands. Father, I pray that tonight that you would come during this time together. Father, these are your people. We've come to your house to worship. We've come to worship together. And Father, I just pray that tonight that as we are gathered in this place that the very presence of God would just walk in and out of every aisle speak to every heart minister to each and every one of us and father when we leave here tonight may we be able to say that it's been good to be in the house of almighty god father speak tonight use your servant pastor bill as he brings the message to us in just a few moments father would you just use your servant as you have so many times in days gone by would you reach down, and Father, even right now, may the Holy Spirit of God touch him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Then when he stands behind the sacred desk tonight, that the Holy Spirit's power would be felt through his words. Father, come tonight. Come in a special way. Minister to our hearts. Minister to our lives. Have thy complete and total right of way. And for all you'll do, we'll thank you and praise you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Not my will, but thine. Not my will, but thine. Not my will, but thy will. Be done, Lord, in me. May thy spirit divine fill this being of mine. Not my will, but thy will be done, Lord, in me. Amen. I hope that's your prayer as you go out throughout the remainder of this evening. Don't forget there's a lot of things going on around here. There's going to be a Red, blood, uh, red Cross blood drive January 18th. You need to get signed up for that. Wednesday night meals are coming back. Awana and small groups will be meeting on Wednesday nights. Just a lot of things happening. God is working and God is moving, and we're grateful for that. Would you pray for our friend and one of our local pastors? Pastor Bill Burdett, as he comes to break the bread of life. the Lord and trusting in the Lord and we're just we're just part of the number but we're loved that's the that's the greatest thing of all we know that beyond beyond everything in this world we're loved by our Savior and I love him back I love him one day I'll see him up in heaven and I look forward to that May happen tonight. <laughs> no worry about that. Pray for me. Thank you, John. Anybody else want to praise him? I don't know that I wanted to hear it because it hit me right, right in the heart. You know, I pray, but usually it's a quick prayer. Oh, God bless somebody. Oh, touch them. They're hurt. Do this, do that, God. But it was like you said, we do it on the run. And I sat there, and he's just preaching. I kept thinking, how long's it been since I really got down on my knees and I prayed to God above about a situation that I believed with all my heart that God was the answer to? It's longer than I want to remember. I want to live my life praying and talking. I was thinking today, and I've heard this many times in my life, about some situation, a man or woman or whatever, had a chair beside their bed. 
and they talked to that chair because Jesus was sitting in that chair. That's the kind of situation I want to have with my Jesus. I want to talk with him. I want him to listen to me to say, thank you, Jesus, for what you did. Oh, by the way, Jesus, I'm here now, and we need you to do this, and we need you to do that. He does need to hear us say thank you to him. And then there's plenty of room left over there for us to bring people up in prayer. Lift them up to him. Call their name out. If it makes them miserable, so be it. Call it louder. Because the only way any of us ever made it to that altar was that somebody called our name out to God somewhere. I'm so glad to see Rick and Anita. So good to see them back here. But there's a lot of others out there that need to be back here too. And it's going to be up to us to see that that happens. Thank you, darling. All right. That's probably the most surprised person in the church house this morning when I looked in the bulletin and said, I have to preach tonight. Uh, Mama Rosa don't do computers anymore, and I'm totally illiterate to a computer, so I don't do the computer. And uh, I guess it was on the schedule for me to, me to break the bread tonight, and uh, after just doing it last week, I figured y'all would be tired of me, and I'd get about a month off, but uh, I guess not, huh? But we are, we are thankful for, uh, for the power of God. And tonight, we, we, we want to uh, dwell on a subject called the anchor. That anchor that will hold us steadfast, that will hold us true right in the midst of storms, that never changes, never never wavers, always there, never never puts you on hold when you call. You know, if anything in this world aggravates me is the fact that you try to get a hold of a human being and you go to this number, hold please, and you wait. When they get on there, they put you on another line which you wait. And it's always on hold. God is never on hold. He never will refuse to answer. Okay, you may not like what the answer is, but he will, re he will answer. So tonight as we dwell on the anchor, and, and keep in mind that we're talking about an anchor, which is Christ Jesus. And we're going to take uh, some, some uh, scriptures in the book of Mark. And we're going to go into the 27th, 28th chapter of Acts as we get into the message a little bit about, about the anchor that holds. Now, I can't, I can't tell you what your anchor is, what you depend on when, uh, when, when uh, uh, what is it the old saying is, when the rubber meets the road. I don't know what your, your anchor may be, but my anchor is Christ Jesus. And that anchor will hold. So just think about the anchor. Okay, think about an anchor holding, and if you're a, uh, a boat person, you know what an anchor is, you know what an anchor does. Like us, the fishermen, you know, that anchor keeps us right over that big old uh, school of, of, of crappy or whatever it is you're fishing for. You anchor that boat, okay, and, and if you really want to stay firm, like the ship that I was on in the Navy, you got an anchor on the front of the boat, and you got an anchor on the back of the boat, so it can't swing or anything. So you're right there. So that's uh, that's a little fishing tri trip uh, uh, trick. If you don't know uh, uh, that trick already, you probably do. Uh, but let's let's read out of the book of Mark, and we'll get into the message uh, as to what God has uh, given us uh, today. As we was uh, Mama Rosa was asleep on the couch, and I had to. I had to catch uh, some of the Word of God uh, in between her. <laughs> I love that woman. You all know that. 
And I, I get away with a lot of stuff, okay? Uh, Susan sitting there shaking her head, yes, probably if Randy tried that, you'd have a bad day. <laughs> You're joking. All right, in the book of Mark, chapter 4, and we're going to start at uh, verse 30, uh, 36. Okay, Mark 4, verse 36, down through the remaining part of that chapter. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was, in the ship, and they were also with him other little ships. We're talking about Jesus here. Okay, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Now, I don't know if you all have ever been in a ship, in a boat, okay, that's filling up with water, but it's a scary thing, okay? Now, even though I know that that boat probably won't sink because it's got flotation device and all that, but as the water comes up and the boat goes down, it gets a little spooky, okay? And he was in the hinder parts of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now, yeah, I've got an amplified uh, a version here also, and, and it, here it, it says, just who is this fellow? Who is this man that can just say, peace be still, and things begin to change? That's my anchor. That is Jesus Christ, that all he has to do is speak the word, and it's done. God the Father one day, He just said, let it be, and we have what we have as a universe, what we have as a world today. Okay, so this anchor that you and I have a privilege and opportunity to serve and to, uh, uh, to follow is the one that can just say the word, and it's done. It's done. All right, I, I, I looked up the word anchor, and there's two, two different ones that sort of fits the message and, and fits what... Jesus really is here, and the, the Webster says the anchor is a device usually made of metal that is attached to a ship or boat that can be cast overboard to hold the vessel in a particular place. I told you about a fishing vessel. The second uh, part that I really like, that which gives stability, which gives safety and protection in the midst of a storm. That is the definition of an anchor. That is a definition to me of Jesus Christ. He gives me stability. He gives me safety. He gives me protection in the time in the midst of the storm. We, we can look, as we said earlier, we're going to look into this 27th chapter of the book of Acts, but we want to go a few other directions here before we get to that, which uh, Acts 27 is Paul being in the, in the storm and where the ship was actually uh, uh, shipwrecked and it, it, it broke up into pieces. But We'll get to that in a little bit. Most of the storms that I encounter myself, and I think I'm, I'm not different from you all, normally they, they're no forewarning to a storm. They just seem like they just happen. Uh, and, you know, we're going along sometimes. Uh, I, I use this old cliche, so don't get, a, don't get upset at me. Fat, dumb, and happy. Just drifting along, fat, dumb, and happy, and all of a sudden you get blindsided by a storm. You get blindsided by something that you had no idea was coming, totally unexpected, and, 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 and just comes so quick sometimes it does catch us off guard. Now, I, I, can th I think I can say this with all sincerity and with all uh, authenticity that we can rest assured we're going to experience some storms in our life. I, I thought, you know, uh, uh, some tragedies is going to come, trials is going to come, devastation even to sometimes to a point will come in our life. I go back and I remember, I, I, I wasn't around then, even though I am an old fella, I wasn't around during World War I, but that was, a, that was a storm of America. World War II, I was born in 44, so I got the last part of that. I was served in Vietnam, uh, in the Vietnam War, in, in the Navy. Uh, I remember the Oklahoma City bombings. I remember 9-11. I remember the Iraq and Persian War. I do certainly remember the COVID pandemic 
that we just went through a few years ago. Those were storms that came upon the world, upon America. And, and they are also storms that come to us as individual people. And I think the only thing that we have, the only hope we have, is in Christ Jesus when these storms come. I, I remember Mom telling me stories about her praying for her brothers that was in World War II and how, how she saw people uh, really got alone with God and got serious with God about protecting her children, protecting uh, America from the onslaught of the war. Uh, so, you know, tragedy sometimes will drive us to our knees. It will drive us to looking to that person that's in, that can take care of the storm, which that person is Christ Jesus. I really believe that most of us uh, will, will experience this. We've either just come out of a storm, we're getting ready to go into one, or we're already in one right now. And I thought, you know, that uh, different things, different situations as they begin to happen, uh, it gets us into these storms of life. And, and storms can come in various things, and we're not going to really get into all the ways that storms come. We just want, uh, I want tonight to dwell on the fact that we have an anchor, regardless of where the storm comes from, how the storm comes, that uh, we have this anchor which is steadfast and sure. I, I thought, you know, the storms are going to come. Remember that. The storms are going to come. It's not if, it's when. And, and, but it's not necessarily the storm that's the problem. It's how we handle the storm. How do we handle a storm of life? Sometimes we just give up. Sometimes we just succumb to the storm. We accept defeat. But if we have another option. We can look to Christ, which is our anchor, and ask His help, and we can grow from that storm. I believe we can have peace right in the midst of the storm. I, I, I've experienced storms, and I've experienced also that I have had peace right in the midst of that storm. No, the storm was still raging, the wind was still blowing, all as, uh, 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 spiritually speaking, but yet I had peace about the situation. I knew that God was in control, but my anchor was steadfast, immovable in that man called Jesus, which is our anchor. So we don't have to succumb to the storm. We don't have to, uh, to fall to the storm. We can look to Christ as our anchor. I think that the, only, uh, the ship only survives a storm by setting its anchor down on solid, solid ground. The ship I was on in the Navy had an anchor in the front and an anchor in the back. And we were in a, a, a pretty bad storm uh, coming off of Cape Hatteras one time. And, and they had to actually throw the anchors out. Uh, to uh, and one thing you don't want to do is for that you got you got to steer that ship where the where the front of the ship is going into the storm. You don't want to get sideways. You want to go forward and and you know you you put that anchor down so that ship is always going to be pointed into the storm because it, you know we we got into some one time and it, it gets to rocking this way and that ship will actually go up so far it can tilt it can go over. So the storm. It needs to be faced head on. I, I believe sometimes we as Christians, uh, we, don't, we don't face our storms head on. We start uh, uh, getting a jelly back or whatever that's called. And we, and we, start, uh, we start doubting. We start uh, looking around. And, but instead of looking to the man called Jesus, we start looking at the circumstances. We start looking at the storm. And we don't need to look at the storm. We need to look at the anchor, which is Christ Jesus. Glory. Don't allow the storm to dictate to us our reaction to the storm. Our reaction should be to Christ Jesus. When the storm threatens to destroy us, we need to cast our anchor on a solid rock, which is Christ Jesus. I want to share a little story with you. It's happened to me on one of my fishing excursions into the Cranberry River. I was wading along and catching a trout every now and then. And I come up on this real pretty hole of water. I said, now, if I could just get up on that rock right there, I'd have a perfect angle to get that bait to float right down into that little hole of water there. And I know there's a big old rainbow just laying there ready for my worm. So I began to climb up on this rock. And I get almost up the top of that thing, and I slip. Back down in that water I go, and I got a set of waders on. If you ever had waders on full of water, that's a bad experience. So what do I do? I got to come off, of, I come wading out of that water with the 
waders full of water, and I'm laying over on the bank on my back with my feet straight up in the air, I would do that, but I'd have trouble getting back up. And, I, and, and draining that water out of, my, out of my waders. And while I'm laying there on my back, I got a spiritual message from God. It said, the rock didn't move, you did. Think about that. The rock stayed right there in the middle of Cranberry River. It did not move one inch. But old Bill did. He slid off of that thing right into the water. So the message that I got from that was that that anchor, that rock, Christ Jesus, did not move, and he never will move, even in the midst of the storm. I was in a storm there. I was in a dilemma. I could have, I, well, I was thinking this, I could drown here. Okay, my waders, waders are full of water. You shaking your head, you been there, brother? Get your waders full of water. It's a bad situation. All right, but the anchor, Christ Jesus, or that rock in the middle of Cranberry River, did not move as the one that was doing the moving. And I think sometimes we cast our anchor in the wrong things. We cast our anchors sometimes in our careers. We, uh, we cast our anchors in a social status we may be able to uh, uh, get up to or in our possessions, how much stock we got, how many money we got in the bank and all the other stuff, our, our talents, our own abilities. And, and sometimes actually in another person, we put our faith all in all those things. And every one of those things, people can fail. But Christ Jesus will never fail. Be sure our anchor is in the right one. Only when we're anchored in Christ will, will we be able to overcome the storms in our life. Men in our church family right today, you heard the request that Joe just made known. Many are in storms today. Some are physical. Some maybe are financial. Some maybe are relationship related some of them are wayward children that burdens our hearts i just wonder if we could pur we could purpose in our hearts tonight it's still accepting and looking at negative in all these areas that's going on maybe right now there's covid is just coming around again oh my there's viruses infections of all kinds of uh, I got two granddaughters are nurses, and they they're treating they're treating infections and viruses that they don't even have a name for. So we get all our mind gets off on all these things and begins to be a storm in our life. And instead of accepting defeat, instead of allowing doubt or even man's report to overwhelm us. We just need to buckle down. We need to get in the Word. We need to get in prayer. Pastor Randy was preaching on prayer this morning. Great message about prayer. We need to begin to seek God's will. Let Him have full control of our ship. In the sixth chapter of Ephesians, it talks about putting on that whole armor of God that we'd be able to stand. After we've done all we can do, the Scripture says, just stand. Stand on the solid rock, which is Christ Jesus. We need to seek refuge in Christ Jesus, our anchor. God's Word never, I don't believe we can find anywhere in this precious Word of God that says just because I'm a child of the King that I'm going to escape storms. In fact, I believe I can find in there where because we are children of God, we're going to, ex we're going to experience some stuff. We're going to experience storms in our life just because we are a child of the King, because we are separated people, because we are holy people trying to live in this troubled world and telling people about Jesus and about His love. You'll get some storms of life just because of your witness, just because of we are who we are or who we should be, okay? But the Word of God does not, being a Christian, does it ever tell us that we're exempt from storms of life. Never have I found that in God's Word. If you can find it there, I'd love for you to show it to me. God's Word never tells us because we're Christians. We never face the storms. But it does tell us that He will be with us in that storm.
I believe in the 15th chapter of John, it talks about the vine and the branches. As long as we stay in the vine, we stay, uh, stay connected to, to the vine, then we, we're in Christ Jesus and we have this anchor at our disposal. Ask what we will, the scripture says. If it be in the will of God, then it will be done for us. The anchor, Christ Jesus. Hebrews 13, 5 gives, gives me some peace. And when it says, I will never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I'll go with you all the way even to the very end. That's God's promise. Man may lie to you. As I said earlier, sometimes we put our, we put our trust and our faith in the wrong things. And pe people sometimes is one of those things that we put our faith and trust in that could fail us. But we can never, never, never do I find any place where God has ever failed to keep His promise. Some of them have not been fulfilled yet, but that's yet in the future. That's called prophecy. It's never been promised that we get saved and we won't face storms. Job 14, 1, as a matter of fact, says mortals or man born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Old, young, saved, unsaved, male, female, doesn't matter. We're going to face troubles. So one of the most exciting stories to me in the New Testament that shows how God had turned adversity into His glory is in the 27th and 28th chapter of the book of Acts. We're not going to not going to dwell there uh, a long time, but we, we, we just want to, we want you to picture this storm. Now we, we find that Paul here, and I've been reading the book of Acts, and uh, we're up to this particular point in the book of Acts every night. The wife and I read and, and have our devotion before we uh, say good night. And we, we, we followed Paul uh, through the, the book of Acts, and, and I, I thought so many times that Paul, he could not wait to give his testimony. He could not wait to tell people what God had done to his forefathers. And they were all the time trying to kill him. Paul was probably the most sought after man uh, I can find in the Bible except Jesus himself. Okay? They were all the time wanting to kill him because he was standing on the truth. And, and, but I thought here that there was a promise made to, made to Paul here. And, and because of that promise, made to Paul, there was 200, I believe, and 76 souls that was on that boat with him. And God specifically told him, said, if you stay on the boat, not a person, not one person will be lost. Not one person will die. But you got to stay on the ship. That's a message right there. If we want to use Christ Jesus as our anchor, we got to stay on the ship. He's the anchor. We got to stay on the ship, okay? So let's let's look into the twenty seventh chapter here just a little bit. The word anchor is only mentioned in the New Testament. Can't find that in the Old Testament at all. And most of the, in in several cases, it actually is a literal anchor, as it was here in this passage. But it can also be used as a metaphor in others. So in this story of Paul and his shipwreck, it's a literal anchor of the ship that they was thrown overboard to keep the ship in and from breaking up, but it was also a metaphor for Paul's faith in God's promise. Paul was very definitely saying God, through an angel, told Paul some things here while he was, while he was there on board. Hope we have an anchor in Hebrews 6, 19 and 20. It says, hope we have as an anchor of the soul. And the Christian's anchor reaches into the Holy of Holies. And I thought I was thinking about that. This anchor that we have, Jesus Christ, is our high priest. Back in the Old Testament, went into the Holy of Holies, and the only one that was allowed him into the Holy of Holies was the high priest. The one, the only one person was allowed there, and that was only once a year. So this, this Jesus that we're talking about here, that Paul's talking about here, and this scripture talking about, goes all the way into the Holy of Holies because Jesus, being our high priest, is the one who petitions God on our behalf. I got a big brother looking out after me. I don't have a natural brother, don't have a natural sister, but I got a big brother named Jesus that's looking out after me. Amen. He's seated at the right hand. This just this, this thrills my soul. He's seated at the right hand of God the Father this very split second, making intercession for old Bill. That'll make an Episcopalian shout. <laughs> I got a little story about Episcopalian. 
I thought I was going to get really chewed out one time. I made that statement in one of my messages, and after this lady, I, I saw her. I knew she was going to come and start talking to me. I said, well, this ain't going to be good. She came up to me. She said, I'm an Episcopalian, and you're right. <laughs> Whew, glory. Make an Episcopalian shout. Jesus Christ, our anchor, our high priest, is seated right this very second at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for you as his child and me as his child. When the storms of life, when they come, Hebrews 13, verse 8 said, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So when the storms of life and the flood, it floods in on us as Christians and Worry and fear or doubt begins to come up, and we just need to look to the anchor, which God's promises and His stability provides us this anchor. May I be as bold as to say it doesn't really matter what the storm is. It doesn't matter what the storm is, it's not about the storm. Are we going to believe and trust God's promises when He says, I'm here, I'm here, I'm your anchor, but you got to throw me overboard. you got to let her hang, you gotta got to hit some solid rock here. God's promises. Promises remain the same. And I really, do, I really believe this from the very depths of my heart that God does not want His children to be defeated. He does not want us to be defeated, but He wants us to be anchored in Him and in a secure place, which is Him. Just as a ship's anchor holds a ship from drifting, so, so does our hope in Jesus. My hope in Jesus Christ keeps me stable, keeps me focused. Because if I had hope in, all, in a lot of other stuff, that I couldn't, I couldn't feel that stability. But I know who I serve. And I love that scripture there, and in in, in, in Paul said that when this angel appeared unto him, he said, angel of the Lord, whom I am, whom I serve, spoke to me tonight and told me some things. See, Paul had, a, Paul had, Paul had an appointment with Caesar in Rome. So God, this is maybe not the right way to say it, but God, in a sense, was obligated to keep Paul. Keep him safe, because he had a divine appointment with Caesar. He, Paul, Paul would have been set free, but he, he appealed to Caesar. Read that. That's beautiful stuff. 25th, 26th, 27th, the book of Acts. But he appealed unto Caesar. So he had an appointed time to go and preach to Caesar, the king, the guy, the main honcho. Paul had an opportunity to go and preach to him. Along the way, as he defended himself, King Agrippa, Felix, all of them, one of them even said, well, Paul almost all persuaded me. One of the others said, Paul, you're crazy. You're a madman. Because Paul's faith was so strong that he knew who his anchor was. He knew who his anchor was. I believe that this anchor, this hope in Jesus, keeps us secure in a difficult and uncertain times, and maybe even some painful times in our life, but this anchor holds. Real quick, four anchors that kept Paul steady and secure are the same four that are available to us today. Great man Paul, but there was four anchors here in this story in the 27th, 28th chapter of the book of Acts that we want to bring out tonight. Anchor number one is God's presence. Paul said that they, he was in the presence of someone this night. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. In the midst of the raging storm, Paul found out that he was not alone. That's a beautiful thing. In the midst of the storm, we are not alone. Sometimes we feel lonely. Sometimes we feel rejected. Sometimes we feel there is no way out, there is no hope, blah, blah, blah. But that's all ugly. The Bible says that there is hope because Jesus Christ 
is there with us. We're not alone. The Lord came to minister peace to Paul's heart. If we have this same confidence in our relationship with Jesus Christ that Paul had in his relationship with Jesus Christ, we have these same promises of faith in God's promises and God's presence in the form of an angel that came to him. And I believe that uh, we, the Scripture actually says this sometimes uh, in one place there. It says, we sometimes entertain angels unaware. I believe there's angels come to us and sometimes we don't recognize those angels. We don't recognize them. I firmly believe that there's two times in my life that I very well could have entertained an angel. You're looking at me like you got four heads. No, I'm telling you experience. One of them was on the, uh, one, of, one of them was right outside the Morrison Building on Courier Street. There's homeless people by, even back in the in the seventies, and this one fellow I had never seen there before, never seen after that, and, and and he did not ask me for money, but I just felt impressed to go up and just say. Good afternoon, actually it was afternoon. Good afternoon to that fella. And, and, and we stood there on the street and talked, and I said, I'm going to lunch, why don't you go along with me? And he said, okay. You all still with me? You don't think I'm goofy, do you? I'm looking at you. I've got one hand back there that says, you crazy. We sat there and we talked, and I had never in my life felt the presence of God any stronger than I did over that meal. That fellow blessed the food. One other time was even a little bit crazier than that, so I'm not even going to go there because you all done, done looking at me like I'm a nutcase. If I, if I, if I, if I'm a... If I'm a nutcase, then I'm screwed onto the right boat. <laughs> Paul here, an angel appeared to Paul. Paul was a man just like you and me. Y'all okay? Got awful quiet in here. You with me? So if, God, if an angel could appear unto Paul, why can't he appear unto you? You may have had some experiences you can't, uh, you can't explain. You ever had any of them? You may not have thought that was an angel, but maybe it was. We have under entertained angels unawares. <laughs> well, I'm in deep trouble now, Susan. You may have talked to the pastor to get me out of this mess. You got any influence with him? No? <laughs> All right. Where are we at here? No, number two. The anchor is the performance of God. God had come through for Paul so many times that he knew that he could trust God as his anchor. Has God not come through for you many times? So why can't you trust him? Why can't I trust him? Huh? We can, can't we? We can. All right. The angel told him, said, stay on the ship. All 276 souls will be saved. That's in Acts 27, verse 31. Shall no, be no loss of life. Okay? And then in Acts 24, 27, 44, it says, they all escaped to land, safe to land. God makes promises. He keeps his, or performs his promises. And may I tell you tonight, God is not slack concerning his promises, as men count slackness. But God always keeps his promise. Anchor number three, the plan of God. I told you that Paul, God had a plan for Paul for him to preach in Rome. In the 27th chapter, verse 24, tells us that Paul had an appointment to preach in Rome, to go before Caesar. The angel of the Lord that ministered to Paul told him, my plan for you, Paul, is to preach to Caesar. I believe I find a scripture in Jeremiah 29, 11 that tells us, tells me that God has a plan for us. He has a plan for each one of us. And we all fit into this master plan of God. I got a, I got a real good preacher friend that's a stonemason. He clarified something to me that I never really had thought about. But in, in building a wall or building whatever the project may be, out of stone, the last little stone that, need, that goes into this project has to be cut to fit. 
Guess what God calls us in one of the scriptures? Lively stones. Don't call me no brick or block. He calls us lively stones. So he cuts us to fit. He has a plan for your life, Jack. He has a plan for your life, Curtis. He has a plan for every person in here to fit into his great big master plan. And he cuts us to fit. You say, well, why am I crazy like I am? Because that's the way God made you, and you fit into his plan somehow, some way. Mama Rose there wonders sometimes why I'm not crazy as I am. Well, that's the way God made me. Now, that can be used in a lot of other ways, too, that it's not right, okay? Get away with a lot of stuff. Well, I can't help myself, but that's just the way God. Oh, yes, you can. Sin's a choice. I'll leave that one with you. Sin's a choice. I'm getting my exercise going up and down here, okay? The angel of the Lord ministered unto Paul. He told him his plan. God has a plan for us. So we need to look at every storm of life. Think about this. Take this home with you. Digest this. We need to look at every storm that comes in our life as part of God's master plan for us. Storms grow you. Jack and I have talked a lot about adversity. You go back to the early church. Go back to the book of Acts. Go back to the early church. They exploded because they were under extreme pressure. Extreme pressure. Paul himself, before he really got a hold, got, Jesus got a hold of him, he was out destroying the Christians. But he got a hold of something. He got a hold of the anchor. It totally turned him around. So adversity grows us. Adversity makes us stronger. You know, you, you see storms out here, especially in the wintertime, you see pine trees that are blowing down. It's not too often you see oak trees uprooted. Pine trees have very shallow roots, so it doesn't take much to topple them. But a big old oak tree has what they call a stem root that goes down deep. We need to be the oak tree, not the pine tree. And it will stand in the times of storm. It will stand in the times of adversity. The anchor of God's plan for us, I don't know what his plan is for you. Maybe, maybe we, n none of us right at this very moment of time really know what God's plan is for us. How he will, how he will manage these storms in our life to make us into that vessel that we need to be tomorrow or next year. Do you know what this year holds for you? No. I don't know who hold, what, what, what tomorrow holds for me, but I know who holds tomorrow. The anchor. Jesus Christ. The anchor. The anchor. The plan of God for our life is for Him to protect us and to prosper us. Now, I'm not talking about materialism here. I'm not talking about a, a ministry of, of you give and pros prosperity ministry. I'm not into that. Not materialistically, but I believe God wants to spiritually prosper every one of us. He wants us to grow. He wants us to mature in Him, to strive. In Kathy's class this morning, we discussed a little bit about striving to be perfect. Not that we have re reached, we have not reached that perfection, but we are striving to be perfect. He wants us to be rich in faith. He wants us to be rich in hope. He wants us to be rich in love for Him and for the world around us. The last anchor that Paul had and relied on was the mighty, omnipotent power of God. See, God has all power. He's strong enough to be our anchor in the midst of the storm. God is strong enough to be that anchor. He's big enough. This just amazes me. I think of this many, many times. That the God that I serve, the anchor of my soul, He said, let it be, and it is. But yet, the third part of that Godhead Trinity lives inside of every one of God's kids. He's a big, big God. 
there's also a small God that can fit in here and to be our anchor in the times of the storm. Only the power of God. Only the power of God. Nothing else is strong enough. Nothing else. No one else is strong enough. So if I'm in a storm, I don't know about you, but I want to be anchored to the strong power of one who can make things happen. Sometimes it looks like that that storm is going to prevail. But when it's all settled, when the waves all settle down, when the wind ceases to blow, when the rain quits and the storm clouds move away, we see that God was in control of the whole situation. Why worry? I had a friend that passed on several years ago that he said, why worry when you can pray? Why worry when you can put your trust in a, in a, in a, in a man called Jesus that can do all things? Why worry? Why fear? Why go through all the panics that we go through sometimes when we feel the things are out of control? But we re need to realize that God is always in control. This I can promise you, this I can promise you, no storm can blow us off course if we are anchored to Christ Jesus. No storm. I had a devotion a few, a few days ago that tells me the power of my anchor in closing. The Jewish culture always talked about the raging waters were something to be feared. And while water represented life, large bodies of water symbolized chaos, danger, and destruction. Water seemed to have a mind of their own, and in their grasp, humanity was at risk. Raging waters could overpower, overwhelm, and destroy. There was little defense against such powers of the creation. The psalmist, however, declares that this God, who is Lord of all creation, also rules over these chaotic waters. This creator God can speak but a word and the creation obeys. The chaos of the waters is made still and at the sound of the creator's voice the raging seas become calm. Our God is the Lord of all creation. There is nothing outside the power of our God. We can take comfort that when we face the chaotic waters of our world in whatever form they may take, our God is more powerful still. There is no chaos our God cannot bring to order or power that is too great for our God to overcome. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. As Susan and Joe would come back, and we're going to close with a, with a song tonight. Uh, I handed you out, a, well, Kevin did, thank you, Kevin, for that, handing out this uh, prayer. And... I thought that if Susan would just uh, just play softly, that you would look at page, maybe you've already read it all the way through, but realize that this is a prayer. This is a prayer from each one of us to God, which very simply says, I cannot fix my situation. I cannot calm the raging seas of my life. I cannot steal the winds that blow against me. I need help tonight. By faith, I cast the anchors of your presence, your promises, your providences, and your performance into my sea of turmoil. I am resolved to trust you that you will walk into my storm and you will speak peace when it is your will to do so. Until then, I will not fear, I will not fret, I will not fight, but I will trust you to do what is best. And whatever your storm is, if you pray this prayer, you pray it from the very depth of your heart, and you release this storm to this man called Jesus, which is your anchor. And you do not fear, you do not fret, you do not fight, but you trust that God will make this storm a blessing. He will make this storm a blessing for whosoever will just believe and just trust in Him. So as we sing this song, I believe it's 370, 470.
570 in your hymnals, 570 in your hymnals. Think about this prayer. Take this prayer home, and if you need to, put it somewhere, and every time you pray, just pray this prayer. If you're going through a storm tonight, God is concerned about that. God is concerned about that. So as we sing, you meditating upon these things of God. If you feel a need to pray, you feel a need to come to the altar and talk to God about a storm you're in, we, we encourage you to do that, to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Always be obedient to the calling of the Holy Spirit, and we'll never be wrong, never go wrong, as we sing. I fixed my hope in Jesus, blessed anchor of my soul. When trials fierce assail me, as storms are gathering o'er, I rest upon his mercy and trust him more. I've anchored in Jesus, the storms of life I'll brave. I've anchored in Jesus, I fear no wind or wave. I've anchored in Jesus, for he hath power to save. I've anchored in the rock of age. Would you stand? He is my friend and Savior. In him my anchor's cast. He drives away my sorrow and shields me from the blast. By faith I'm looking upward beyond life's troubled sea. There I behold a haven prepared for me. I've anchored in Jesus, the storms of life how brave. I've anchored in Jesus, I fear no wind or wave. I've anchored in Jesus, for he hath power to save. I've anchored in the rock of ages. Thank you, Joe. Anchored in the rock, anchored in Jesus Christ tonight. So as we leave this place, go realizing the storms of life will come, but we need not fear because they were anchored in that rock, which is Christ Jesus. Father, we thank thee for this night. We thank you for this privilege of bringing your word to these precious people that are here in this sanctuary and those that may be online. We just pray, Father, that we can get a hold of this, that we're anchored in Jesus, and that the storms of life may rage, but we are safe, we're secure, we're stable because the anchor is cast and holds our ship stable. We praise you for who you are, not for all the blessings that you give us, God. We just give you glory and praise for that. But we want to praise you most of all that you're God, you're almighty God. And you made it possible for us as your, as your people, your creation, to be redeemed and back into that family of God that Adam and Eve, Father, messed up. And Father, that we needed that Redeemer. Jesus came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. And one day that we all accepted you, Father, as our, as our Savior, as our Redeemer. And pray that you would go with us down through the remaining part of this week. God, we don't know what's ahead. We don't know what, uh, what's ahead the next hour. But, Father, we know that you hold the future in your hands. And, as Father, that all things work together for good and love thee. So we honor you, give you glory and praise. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. Keep you down through this week. Pray you'll have a good week.